In today's video, we'll learn how to build a camera application using Flutter. Our application is going to work on iOS, Android, and web. We're going to be building an application that is going to show us a live feed of the device's camera, and then we'll have the ability to click a button and actually take a picture from the live feed and then save that within our device's gallery. As always, if you're enjoying the content thus far, then don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually taking a look at all of the dependencies we require to actually build our application. The only two dependencies that are necessary for building this application is the camera package, which is basically a Flutter plugin for iOS, Android, and web that allows us to access our device's camera. And then besides this, we're also going to be using the gal package, which is a very cool package that allows us to save image and videos to our device's gallery. So let's take the first dependency, which is our camera package, come back to our Flutter project, come to the pubspec.yaml file, and then paste this under the dependency section like so. Once this is done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is copying the gal package. So let's go to gal, copy this, come back to our pubspec.yaml file, and then paste this under the dependency section as well. So that's pretty much it for all of the dependencies. The next thing that we have to do is configure the Android and iOS side of things so that we are able to access the device's camera. For that, what you can do is either follow along with the steps that I'm showing you in the video, or you can come to the actual pub.dev page for the camera package and gal, and you can go through the steps here listed to actually configure the project properly. I'm going to be taking you through the steps one by one now. And as always, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is taking a look at the iOS side of things. So for the iOS side of things, open up the iOS folder, come to runner, and then open up the info.plist file. And here you're going to be pasting in the following two entries within your info.plist, which is NS camera users description and NS microphone users description. So let's copy these, come back, and then within the dictionary, I'm going to be pasting these parameters in like so, and that's pretty much all we had to do. So with this done, I will just fix up the formatting, do command save, and that's pretty much all we had to do. So you can close down the info.plist file. After this is done, that's pretty much all of the setup we had to do for the iOS side of things. So we can close this down and let's focus on Android for now. So for Android, you can come to Android app, and then from here, you're going to go to source, and then you're going to come to build.gradle. And within build.gradle, you're going to make sure that the minimum SDK version is set to 21 or higher. So come down where you see default config, and then minimum SDK version, and make sure that this is 21 or above. Now that this is done, you can close this down as well, and then you are going to come to Android app source main Android manifest.xml. Within the Android manifest.xml file, we're going to be adding a uses permission clause within the manifest for actually writing to external storage. And then besides this, within the actual application tag that you see here, we're going to be adding the following request for external storage like so. So with this done, that's pretty much all we had to do. I will do command save, and that's pretty much the Android side of things done as well. So with this done, just as a quick side note, I'd like to let you know that if you're going to be testing this application on a simulator, then it's not going to work for iOS. And the reason for that is because an iOS simulator does not have access to any camera. So if you want to test this application on an iOS device, then you'll have to use a physical device and test the application on that because only a physical device has access to camera. While on the side of Android, you're going to be given a simulated camera feed for both the front facing and the back facing camera for the device. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So now that we have the setup done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is just basically giving a quick run to my application and then running it on the simulator that you see on the screen. And then from here, if the application is running as intended, then we will resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, the application is now running on the simulator, so we can actually begin the process of implementing the camera functionality within an application. To do that, I've created a homepage widget, which is a stateful widget. For now, its build function just returns a scaffold, and we're going to be coding all of the logic with it here. So the first thing that we have to do is basically determine if we have camera available on our device. So to get started with this, within my homepage state, I am going to be creating a function, and I'm going to say that this function will be future void as its return value. And then this is going to be called underscore setup camera controller like so, and then I'm going to say that it's not going to take in any parameters and I'll mark it at async, and this needs to be future. With this done, the first thing that we're going to be doing is accessing some information on our device to determine if we have cameras on the device or not. So to do that, I'm going to create a list of camera description, and this class is going to come from the camera package. 
Then once this is done, I'm going to say that we're going to name this list as underscore cameras. And then I'm going to set this equal to a call await available cameras. And this is a actual function that comes from the camera package. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is making sure that the cameras are actually on the device and that our cameras list isn't empty. So to do that, I will do cameras dot is not empty. And if the cameras are not empty, only then are we going to proceed further and actually create a camera controller. So the next thing that now I'm going to be doing is basically on the home pitch state, I am going to be creating a variable that will allow me to keep a track of the cameras that I have available. So for that, I'm going to come to the top of my home page state. And here I'm going to create a list again of camera description. I'm going to call this cameras and I'm going to set that to be an empty list to begin with. Then once we've deduced that we do have cameras, then I'm going to call set state within which I'm going to set the cameras list equal to underscore cameras like so. And now that this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is now constructing a camera controller. So to construct a camera controller, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to the top of my home page state. And here I'm going to say that I'm going to create a camera controller variable. So I'm going to say that it's going to be camera controller. It will be optional because to begin with, we might have a controller, we might not have a controller. In the case that we don't have a camera, we can't create a controller anyways. So this will be an optional variable. And then I'm going to call this camera controller. Then within the actual set state function, after we've deduced that we do have cameras, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is setting the actual camera controller equal to a new instance of camera controller. And we need to give it two things. We need to give it a description of our camera. So this is the actual camera description, as well as a resolution preset. So how high the resolution is going to be for the actual cameras feed. So for resolution, what I'm going to be doing is basically using resolution preset dot high, max, medium, I'm just going to do high, that's just what my test concluded to be a good one. And then for the camera description here, I'm going to do cameras dot and then first. So I want to take the first camera that's available within our cameras list and set that to be the camera that is going to be used by this camera controller. So with that said, that's pretty much all we had to do. So the last thing that we have to do is the following, which is that I am going to go ahead and after we've created our camera controller is to actually take our camera controller and on that call initialize. And then once I've called initialize on it, then I'm going to wait for the initialization process to complete. And once the initialization process completes, then I'm going to call set state to basically cause the widget feed to be rebuilt. And this is going to cause the camera feed to start appearing on our actual UI. So now that we have our underscore setup camera controller function defined, I'm going to take this function and I'm basically going to come to my home page state class. And here I'm going to override the init state function. And I'm going to say that once the super classes init state function has been called, I'd like to call setup camera controller like so. And that's pretty much all we have to do. With this done, now we can actually focus on building the UI. So for building the UI, I'm going to come to the build function and then to my scaffold. Here I'm going to set the body attribute to a call to a function called build UI like so. And then I'm going to define this function now by doing the following, which is widget underscore build UI, and then open up the functions body. Within this, the first thing that we have to deduce is, do we have a camera controller? Is it initialized? If it is, only then are we going to be showing the feed. Otherwise, we have to show some kind of a loading indicator. So how can we do that? Well, we can use an if statement where I can say that if our camera controller is null or our camera controller dot value dot is initialized is equals to false. So if our camera controller is null, or if our camera controller isn't initialized, then what would I like to do? Then in that case, I'd like to return a const center widget, and the center widget is going to have a child, which is going to be a circular progress indicator. So with this done, that's pretty much all we have to do. And if this if statement doesn't run, then this basically means that the camera controller wasn't null and that the camera controller has initialized. So we can for now just return a safe area widget and the child for that can be a sized box dot expand. That's pretty much all we're going to be doing for now. So let's test this out. So to test it out, what I'll do is I'll restart my application and you're going to see that we get this actual pop-up appearing where the actual device is asking us for permissions. So we're going to use while using that and while using that. And as you can see, we can see that the camera feed appears here in, as an indication that, hey, we're using the camera. And then the loading progress indicator also disappears after some time when the camera controller has initialized. So now that the camera controller has initialized, then what I'm going to be doing is coming to my size box. And within this, I'm going to set the child to be a column widget. 
Then for this column, I'm going to set the children's list to be an empty list for now. And then here I'm going to set the main axis alignment and the cross axis alignment to be the following. Then once this is done within the actual children's list, I'm going to basically add an actual camera preview, which is an actual widget that allows us to give it a camera controller and then preview the actual feed from our camera. So it's going to be called camera preview. And here we're going to give it the camera controller. And I can add an exclamation mark here at the end because I know that the camera controller is not going to be null. With this then, you can see that we're seeing the camera feed appearing. And since we are using a Android emulator, this is a simulated feed of the front facing camera, which is this pixelated person that you're seeing. So now what I'm going to be doing is basically wrapping this camera preview by doing control shift R on Mac with an actual widget. And this widget is going to be a sized box. And then I'm going to give a fixed height and a width to the actual camera preview like so. So now that this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is after this size box, adding an icon button. And this icon button is going to have an on pressed callback function, which is going to be empty for now. And then an icon, which is going to be the following. There we go. So now we can see this button here. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is that on the icon button, I'm going to set the icon size to be let's do 100. And this looks better. So now what I'd like to do is basically show you guys before we actually implement the process of capturing a picture from the camera feed, how you can switch the cameras to use the front facing camera of the device or the back facing camera. To do that, you have to do the following and that is that you need to reinitialize your camera controller and you need to make sure that the description you pass to the camera controller is for another camera. So in our case, the first element of our cameras list is referring to the front facing camera. If I go ahead and change this to the last and do command save and then restart my application, you're going to see that now we're seeing a camera feed for the back facing camera of our device. And on the back facing camera for our device, if you're using an Android simulator, you can press the option button on your keyboard and then you can use the mouse as well as the WASD keys to kind of move around in the actual camera feed that you're seeing and then set it to whatever you'd like to set it to. So in this case, I'd like to set it to a view of the kitchen. And then you can press on this button, which we haven't implemented the functionality just yet to actually capture this picture from the camera feed. So let's actually take a look at that. So to do that, you're going to be doing the following. You're going to be coming to the point where you've defined your icon button. And here we're going to be doing two things. The first thing that we're going to be doing is actually capturing an image from the camera feed. And then the next step is going to be to save the captured image onto our devices gallery. So to actually capture the image, I can create a variable of type X file. I'm going to call this picture and I'm going to set this equal to await camera controller dot and then it's going to be a function called take picture and that's as easy as it is. There's nothing else that we have to do. I'm also going to mark this callback function as async because we're using an await call here. And then once this is done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is actually using the gal package to then save this image to our gallery. But before we can do that, we have to stop running our application and actually configure our application to work properly with the gal package. What we have to do are a couple of things for both iOS and Android. So let's do that. So for iOS, what we need to do is come again to our iOS runner info.plist file. And here we need to add a new key string pair. So I'll copy this and paste it once more. And the key in this case is going to be NS photo library add usage description. And then the string here needs to be a correct description for why you need access to the photo library of the device. I'll just leave this to be this default value. And once this is done, that's pretty much all we have to do for the iOS side of things. For Android, you have to make sure the following, and that is that you come to, once again, the actual Android folder. And within this, you go to app, source, main, Android manifest.xml, and make sure that you've added this use permission clause for writing to external storage and that within the application tag, you've added Android request legacy external storage. And the conditions for that are the following. If you're using API version less than or equal to 29, you need to do this. And if you want to go above API version 29 or add API version 29, then you need to use the following clause. So I'd recommend adding both of them. That's going to be the best step forwards. So with this done, that's pretty much all of the setup we have to do for gal. So now what I can do is come back to my home underscore page dart file, come to the on press callback function. And now that I've actually captured the picture, all I have to do is use the gal object that comes from the gal package. And on that we have the function called put image. And here we need to give it a path to the actual image, which we can get from picture dot path. 
And with this done, that's pretty much all we have to do. So now what I can do is actually start running my application once again. And once it's running on the simulator, I will resume the video. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, the application is now running on the simulator once again. So let's actually try to see if we can take a picture. If I click here, you can see that nothing appears here and we have successfully taken a picture because no error appeared. So if I go out of this application, come to the photos or any gallery app that your device uses, you can see that here we have the photo that we take from the camera available. So that's great. Now we can see that we are able to access the device's camera and then take pictures using our Flutter application. The last thing that I'm going to be showing you guys is some setup process that you have to do for your application in order for it to not crash on certain devices in the case that your application goes into the background state. So for that, what you have to do is the following, and that is that you have to come to your actual widget, whichever widget actually accesses the device's camera and make sure that besides it extended whatever widget it extends, it actually uses a mix-in and that mix-in is called widgets and I believe it's called binding observer. And once this is done, then what you're going to be doing is that on this actual class, now that it extends the specific mix-in, override the did change app lifecycle state function. And then you can call the actual super classes did change lifecycle state function. That's not an issue. So here we're going to be doing the following. In the case that our application lifecycle does change, the first thing that I'd like to do is deduce if we have a camera controller. If we don't have a camera controller, we are not going to be doing anything. So we can just return from this function. So for that, I'm going to do if camera controller is null or if our camera controller dot value dot is initialized is equals to false. So in this case, we can just return and we're not going to be doing anything. Otherwise, I'm going to do if the state of our application is app lifecycle state dot inactive. So if our actual application becomes inactive, then I want to basically destroy the controller. So I can do for that camera controller dot destroy or dispose, I should say. And then once our actual application resumes, so I can do else if, and then I can do state is equals to app lifecycle state dot resume. Then I'd like to reconstruct the controller once again. So for that, I can just call our setup camera controller function. And that's pretty much all we have to do. Besides this, one good error handling step that I'll recommend to you is to basically come back to your setup controller function, come to where you're doing camera controller dot initialize dot then. And maybe there might be a case where when we actually call the initialization function and before the actual camera controller has been initialized, the user exits out of the app or the user maybe puts the app into a background state. So we'd like to make sure that we only call set state in the case that the actual widget is mounted. So if the actual widget is not mounted, which we can check by doing mounted and then add in the exclamation mark. So if the widget is not mounted, then I'd just like to return. I wouldn't like to call set state. And then also on this then function, I'd like to call the catch error function. And I'm going to say that in the case that we get an error, I just like to basically print that error to the console, but you can add any error catch logic here as you'd like. So with this done, that's pretty much some of the good error handling logic that we have to implement in order for application to not crash in certain scenarios. So with this done, we can give our application a final test. I'm going to hold the option key and kind of move around. And then I'm going to basically take a picture of this dining table, click the actual button here. And with this, hopefully the picture should have been taken. So if I exit out of the application, come to the photos gallery and actually reload. Yeah, there we go. We can see the actual images being displayed. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you learned a thing or two about how to build a camera application using Flutter. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.